how was your life in Holland? When you, like, uh, I mean, was it the first time when you went to Europe for from? Yeah, the it's US? first time I'd ever been out of the U.S. I was 17 years yeah. old and just flew. And this was pre cell phones and and email so like i got a call from my mom once every two weeks because mm. it was really expensive and other than that you're just like here you yeah, go yeah. on your own so so a lot of times people going to university have the big like struggles of being away from home for the mm -hmm. first time and by the time i got to university i was like this is nothing i'm in the same country but it was it was amazing because there was i didn't know anyone else there were no other exchange mm. students in that town so i was literally just put in this this small dutch town and yeah. had to learn the language so by the end of it my language skills were pretty good and because again an ear for accents and mm -hmm. an ear for dialects kind of the actor's ear that i've always had mm -hmm. my my accent was really good yeah so even in the first couple of sentences people assume i'm dutch mm. Nice. But then I only know a very limited vocabulary. Mm -hmm. So then they just assume I'm a Dutch idiot. <laughs> <laughs> But speak very fast at me because they heard what they heard sounded right and no one from another country speaks Dutch. So if you know a couple of phrases, right, yeah. they assume you're Dutch and start going a million miles an hour. Yeah. And I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> that thing that I said to you is all I know so far. <laughs> Please slow down. Yeah. But uh, what was your impression when you when you came to like to, to completely different country with different mentality? Like how how was it for you? Well, I was. I mean, you you've had that experience too. But it was at 30. It was fascinating. Um, the because again, U.S. is such a bubble. In Europe, you have so much more awareness of other cultures because you're right next to them. Yeah. But you know. I can drive 900 miles and barely hear a detectable change in accent. Like it's, Texas is really big. Arkansas is in the same area. Yeah. Um, so, so realizing first of all that getting thrown into that level of diversity, and also realizing like, oh, how America sees America, and how the world sees America are very different. Right. And as a 17-year-old, I mean, I thought I was. A yeah. citizen of the world and was yeah. fairly liberal in my thinking, but even then realizing like, oh, not everything is perceived <laughs> the same way. And that was in the the George Bush era and just pre-Clinton era when uh, when you know we were not necessarily beloved across the globe. So being able to pretend I was Dutch while traveling was also a really good thing. <laughs> Because <laughs> Americans usually just pretend they're Canadian, but now I can pretend I was Dutch. The, the one thing that I noticed, I'm not sure, like you, I, you should know, but uh, right now, like every time when I, like when I'm, for example, I live in London, I live not too far from Heathrow, mm -hmm. and basically when I take two, you can hear American straight away. It's not even necessarily, it's not even like obviously an accent, and you know, like rolling R's and all this stuff, but like you can hear because they're loud, they're loud. even even when they speak quietly you can it's just like the projection is something it's i dream of projection like that because when i when i did theater like i always had problem with you know being loud enough and projecting the uh yeah the also it's a lack of situational awareness like the america because again people in european countries are used to traveling around other people that are not like them all the time and you have a a mindset for that americans are just used to everything being their territory and they come in just loud i mean i get embarrassed on the two because i'm like you're talking so loud and you're right there and there's all these people around you and you're oblivious to the fact that everyone is now hearing that timmy left his socks mm -hmm. on the other like no we no we don't need to know that um yeah there's a there's a lack of situational awareness that is uh uh hilarious and also embarrassing that my countrymen often, often have. <laughs> and I try, like, I've spent a lot of time over here. I've yeah. shot over here video projects for the last, like I said, 12 years anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And some of them for months and months and months. But even I, like, people will look at me walking down the street and they're like, oh, that's an American. No, and I mean, I'm like, like well, I got good shoes, I got a cool shirt, why do you... And they're like, no, it's just something about, they can tell you're an American. No, I mean, there is nothing bad in it, because, like, here is a well, thing, like... Uh, no, I mean, yeah. look, I most... I know you're not saying that, but I, I don't know that Most it's... of the Americans, I'm not necessarily always a, a huge fan of American, you know, like, politics around the world, but, like, if we talk about people, like, I kind of like most of the American people who I met, like actually very nice people I like them well and that's <laughs> someone else said that like oh Americans get such a bad rap but everyone I've met over here has been so nice yeah, I'm like yeah. yeah that's because you're meeting the five percent that are traveling internationally <laughs> and have that mindset if yeah. they're coming over here they're already yeah. uh, different from a lot of the people in the US even well, like I've been to US twice I've been to to New York and to LA both for like a week uh, <clears throat> for work when I still mm -hmm. had 
job. <laughs> and like again, like most of the people who I met, like are were very, very, very nice and polite and just great. I mean, like I'm not saying that all Americans are like that. In every nation, there are like nice people and there are idiots. So like obviously, America is not exclusion. I think. I think some of the some of the negativity is well earned um, towards the U.S. But I think, you know, people are people. I think you can't you can't say broad things about. Mm-hmm. Uh, Any people from a country across the board, but in general. So look, uh, when you travel be- between America and the UK, like, do you have some kind of adaptation period? Like when you come here, for example, from America, like, oh yeah, I forgot this is how it's done here, and then when you go back, like, oh, actually, yes, I. So I kind of got used to to the UK a little bit. Yeah, it's mostly just phrases that I use when I've been over here for two mm-hmm. months that creep into my <laughs> lingo, and then all my friends in the US look at me strange. My girlfriend's like, "What?" Yeah. I'll say, "I'm gonna nip to the loo." I'm like, what? I'm gonna go to the bathroom. Okay. <laughs> also, we call it a bathroom in the U.S. Like we yeah. don't want to admit that it's a toilet. Like I we don't want to say there's a toilet in there. Yeah. We'll call it a bathroom or a restroom. Yeah. Like we're not resting. No one's really rest. If you're resting in there, it's a problem. <laughs> you should have that checked into. But we we're afraid to admit that there are bathrooms in the that, that that's what's happening in there. But yeah, yeah. Th- just a lot of fr- a lot of phrases. I mean, America is built around the automobile, and it's built around. Convenience. You can get a 24-hour just about anything. Mm-hmm. The idea that a, that you can't go to a grocery store at 8 p.m. at night yeah. is unfathomable to the United States. Mm-hmm. Um, but so you get you get used to that kind of convenience. But also, I just I like I like city living. Dallas is a is a car city. You have to drive anywhere. If I want to go to the grocery store, I have to get in my car and drive 10 minutes to go to the grocery yeah. store. There's walking. But like big big cities like New York mm-hmm. and and London. Yeah. That are walkable cities. I do love. My impression of America was like American flags are everywhere. They're it's like everywhere. people don't know where they live. <laughs> and then when I kind of like when I was watching TV, like in between, you know, uh, in the evening, everything is big. Everything is huge. Everything is Michael Bay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I remember with the when the director of Inside Man and who I've been working with for many years, Jim Shields, who's from mm-hmm. here, will come. First of all, like looking at the car dealerships with a giant American flag that's like 40 feet by 70 feet. He's like, what? And the, you know, the beginning of every sporting event, they'll play the national anthem. And he's like, we don't do that. Yeah. He's, Both the teams are from America, right? He's like, yeah. I said, but they're still doing. It. He's like, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, but it's also like a world championship. The, yeah, it's the it's the World Series of baseball, but it's just the United States. Um, but then also, like, it was just an American football like normal Sunday match. Mm-hmm. And James, our producer, and, and Jim, the director, were there on a project in Phoenix, and they're watching it, and they're like, there's jet flyovers and flames on the field mm-hmm. and a music yeah. video happening beforehand and all the players, gra- and they're like, is this the, is this the championship? Is this the final? Yeah, I'm like, no, Tuesday. that's just an average Sunday or Monday night. And they're like, this is insane. <laughs> And then they get all excited to watch the beginning of the American football game because they've never seen a whole game. And yeah. they're like, all right, kickoff. Yeah. Why is everybody standing around? <laughs> like, oh, well, we stop. And then we do a little bit more. And then we stop again. And we do a little <laughs> bit more. And they're used to football where it just is go, go, go yeah, for 45 yeah. minutes. Yeah. yeah, that's not the way American football works. Yeah, I mean, like, I never, I, w- I would love to go to America at some point, like, for for the Super Bowl and just, like, to, to be in the, you know, like, in the room. Oh, in the stadium. All of the sporting events okay. in the stadium is insane. Yeah. It's so much fun. Yeah. Well, the, I mean, you can barely see. You, you're watching on the Drumbotron because you're so far away from the action, but still you're watching TV with 80,000 other people that are just as excited about it as you are.